All right, welcome back to the easiest citric acid cycle slash Krebs cycle video on YouTube. If you're new here, welcome. I am Keishan's class, and I make videos on everything, all the pathways of biochemistry, physiology, organic chemistry, and whatnot. I like to color code everything, make it super easy to understand, go step by step, explain everything that's happening so you can get A's on your exams. Can you believe it? We're almost done with biochemistry. I'm just kidding, we're not. We're nowhere close to finishing. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to get there. Now, there are a few prerequisites I would like you to watch beforehand. Uh, that would be the glycolysis videos, the ubiquinone and NAD plus videos, and the pyruva dehydrogenase complex, which was the last video I just made. The reason is, is because what we're doing in this video and all the future ones is going to build off this, right? These three videos. So the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. Here on the bottom, here's an overview of the entire pathway, whatnot. I'm not gonna go over it because we're actually gonna go over the entire pathway, step by step, but you know, just for your reference here, uh, it's here. Now, it's one, of, one thing I wanna focus on is this stored energy right here, the three NADHs plus the ubiquinone. The stored energy, think about it as a bank. Okay, what we're doing is the protons store energy and it'll be transferred to the electron transport chain. So this is the bank, okay? We're basically depositing protons into this, into these two molecules to be used at a later time. That's what it is. This entire process, this entire citric acid cycle is a bank, okay? Think about it like that. If you don't care about the history, then you can skip this and just go to step one. But if you do care and find it interesting, here it is. Albert Yergi, apologize if that pronunciation is wrong, uh, was a Hungarian biochemist and actually found out some of the steps of the citric acid cycle. Not all of them, but some of them. And he actually found it out uh, using pigeon breast muscle. So the, the muscle, like the breast muscle of pigeons. And he was also the first person to isolate vitamin C and found the molecular mechanism of muscle contractions. This guy was an absolute powerhouse, an absolute unit. Imagine how massive this guy's brain looks like. It's 400 IQ. Um, now the cycle was actually finalized by Hans Krebs and William Johnson in 1937 in England. Here's a little fun fact. Nature, which was like, you know, where you, people publish their papers and whatnot, actually rejected their publication due to too many submissions at the time. They had so many other researchers trying to you know, put their, uh, publish their papers and whatnot. And Nature actually rejected these people because they're like, you have a little backlog here. Um, but what did they regret? It? Because this was the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle. So, you know, they're lost. Now, Yergi and Krebs were, only, were the only two people awarded the Nobel Prizes. Uh, William Johnson was not because he, his contribution was not that significant to award a Nobel Prize. Step one. Now, hopefully you watched my pyruvate dehydrogenase complex video. If you did, you'll recognize acetylcholate. We made that. Now, the new player here is oxaloacetate. Okay, so what's going to happen is this acetyl group is going to attack the carbonyl carbon of oxaloacetate. You might notice that this right here is an illegal reaction. This would never really happen. A methyl group attacking the carbonyl carbon in organic chemistry, this doesn't really happen. But with the assistance of citrate synthase, the enzyme here, this is going to happen. And what's going to happen is this carbonyl carbon is going to attack and the acetyl group is going to join but the thioester bond here shh, is going to break, Fshink! right, slice off, it's gone, okay? Now, this is going to happen with the assistance of water. This will help break up the bond. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to create this new molecule called citrate. I know it looks a little complicated to memorize, but think about it this way. You're going to start with a carbon in the middle. On the top and the bottom, you're going to put a CH2. And on top of that, and on the bottom of that, you're going to put a carboxylate group, a COO minus. On the center carbon, to the right of it, you're also going to, going to put a COO minus carboxylate. And the left, of it, uh, the left of it, you're going to put a hydroxyl group. That's it. Think about it like that way. So what we're doing here is we started oxaloacetate as a four carbon compound. By adding the acetyl group to it, we have now made it a six carbon compound. All right? That's step one. 
So it's not too bad, right? You just gotta memorize this one. If you memorize Sitri, you're home free for the rest of this pathway. Step two. Now we have the citrate. Here's what we're gonna do. The hydroxyl group here and one of the hydrogens here on carbon number four is going to leave with the help of the enzyme aconitase. So water is gonna leave. We're gonna have some rearranging of bonds. Here's what we're gonna do. The bond between carbon three and carbon four here is now gonna be a double bond. I apologize, there's a missing negative charge here. There we go, fixed. Okay, that's it. That's all we did. So water left, a connotase will help with that, and we have now a double bond between carbon three and carbon four. That's it. Now here's what's gonna do, what we're gonna do. Water is now gonna come back with the help of a connotase. And now the hydroxyl group is gonna to go to carbon number four now, and that hydrogen that also left is gonna to go to carbon three here. So all we just did is rotate this. So this went here and this the hydrogen went here. That's it. This is a flip. This is now called isocitrate. Okay. Now the intermediate molecule here is called aconitate. So it's not too bad. All we just did is rearrange the molecule. The hydroxyl group went to carbon four and the proton went to carbon three. And that's it with the help of phaconitase in water. So not too bad. Step three, this looks crazy, I know, but I promise you it's actually quite easy. Now everything is color coded, so it makes it very easy to understand. Here's what's gonna happen. We have the isocitrate, right, we just created. This is gonna stay fine, normal, right? Nothing's gonna happen. The hydroxyl group here and the water, or not water, the proton here from carbon four is going to attach to NAD plus, fully reducing it. So now we have NADH plus H, right? NADH plus H, okay? So we just cashed in, right? Because remember the overview here, right? The three NADHs molecules, we just cashed in one of them, right? The bank. Okay, this is gonna float away and go to the electron transport chain later. Here's what's gonna happen now. The intermediate molecule. This negative charge here, this oxygen here, I should say, is very unstable. So the electrons are gonna move here, right? And then more organic chemistry here. What you really need to know here is that this part breaks off. All of this right here breaks off and becomes CO2 to be exhaled, okay? This double bond, oxygen, does not become a double bond anymore. What it actually becomes is a single bond, and the double bond actually gets transferred to this carbon and this carbon. Okay, so if you were to number our carbons here, let's do our one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the, the double bond now is on carbon three and carbon four and no longer on the oxygen carbon here, the carbon oxygen on carbon number four. Okay, that's all we did. So the arrows, right? This completely, this entire thing breaks off. The double bond now goes to here and this, the electrons go and move to the oxygen. That's what happens here. Now, we're, now all we're gonna do here is add a proton. That's all we're doing here. Adding the proton, an invisible proton is gonna come along, okay? Actually, it probably is from here. It's gonna come and add on to carbon number three. So let's number of carbons here. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna now add on to carbon number three. The double bond is now gonna to go to the oxygen here. Okay, so here is the double bond here. No longer on the carbon carbon, now it's on the carbon oxygen here. Okay, this is called alpha ketoglutarate. Now, the one thing you also need to know is there's a invisible player here called manganese. Manganese helps stabilize these intermediates here for the time being until the electrons can move. Otherwise the entire thing would just break apart, right? And that would not be good. So manganese here is a key player. I did not draw it here because it's like kind of invisible, right? But it's helping stabilize. That is step three. Now for this video, I'm gonna end at step three because we have a lot to do. It's gonna get more complicated but I think we accomplished a lot here. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And until next time, later.